the love, the passion, the courage, the commitment, the loyalty, the fidelity, everything necessary that we may walk as matured offspring. I definitely greet every one of you in the name of the Lord. And I thank God for all of us finding it still reasonable enough and still much of a necessity to say that we got to come together and worship regardless of how many of us there are. I'm still so convinced about the goodness of God. This is this is way more than some type of fable or something that we've heard, something that was just handed down. It's one thing to just hear stories and traditions, but no one can take from you your personal experience that you have with the Lord. There's got to be something that happens. There's got to be. Scripture says that signs and wonders will follow the word. And it's almost like I want to apologize because I know the local assembly has scarred so many. So many people came up trying to believe. And, and sometimes I think about how many people will actually be held accountable because of the people that fell away, even when they tried to believe. Scripture says, let not many of you become eager to be teachers because those will be responsible for a more stricter judgment. So I definitely greet every one of you and I want you all to know that the Lord sees every one of you as so precious, so valuable, so royal. Jesus said, a bruised reed he would not even break. He's very familiar with every test that we've had, every trial we've experienced. Everyone that has had their heart broken. But he said that he would never leave us. And he himself would never forsake us. So, Father, right now, we just welcome your spirit right now. We thank you right now, Lord God, for breathing upon us once again, Lord God. Like Brother Trey said, Lord God, we don't want to crawl across a finish line. We want to be able to walk or even run in full stride. Knowing that he who has called us. Will also complete the work. In the mighty name of Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Amen. And praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, y'all. Give God. Just give God a hand. Clap of praise. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. There's a couple of things I want to uh, talk about and share with you all on today. I thank God for all of the elders that are here with me, the ministers. Minister Bosco, man, it's, 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 it's happening, bro. It's, it's going to another level, bro. It really is. It, it really is. Sister Etienne and Nisa, oh, my God, y'all, it's, it's so powerful. Brother Trey, at a moment's notice, y'all, believe it or not, we're actually allowing the gifts to be made manifest because the gifts will not only make room but it would also ignite and expire other people that have true gifts of God. And it's something about not taking the gift and allowing it to be compromised, but using it truly to the glory and to the honor of God. Y'all, I got a word I believe that the Lord has given unto us. If you find, if you would, the book of 2 Peter, 2 Peter, the first chapter. Hallelujah. I believe that there's a saying that we used to say growing up a lot, and I'm pretty sure some of you all may have. I don't know if it's just for the older generation. I don't know if it made it to the to Gen Z as much. But uh, there's a lot of wisdom in street smarts. 
I remember they used to say stuff like game recognize game. And it's something about being able to know some people who have come to local assemblies, they decided to leave not because they weren't hungry, but because they didn't see authentic. And a lot of people, God has so many children in this earth. The scripture says that they're called the elect, the chosen of God. And the elect and the chosen of God have been on this path to royalty and we've experienced so much hardship, so much pain, so much, so much turmoil. And yet I'm so glad that the storms that came in life did not eclipse or totally stifle the hunger and the thirst that we have for Messiah Yeshua himself. Second Peter chapter number one. I'm going to read this these three verses real quick and then we're going to try to get deep into it because I didn't realize it was going to be this much. Second Peter chapter one, starting at verse number nine. Verse number nine says, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and had forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Verse number 10, wherefore the rather brethren Give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. For if you do these things, what does your Bible say after that? You will never stumble. You will never fall. Verse number 11. Watch this. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly. Oh, my God. And to the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, I got two words that really hit me and I was kind of wondering, like, Lord, which way am I going with this? What? I didn't really know what to title it. Well, one word in verse number nine that hit me was blind. He that lacked these things is blind. And then verse number 11, the word that got me was entrance. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you. Everybody say, I'm looking for my entrance. For my Let me tell y'all something. If y'all look around this room, y'all, and, and I'm going to just kind of step off for a second. But it's like when I was young, I could still remember my mom when we'd be walking down the street. She would tell me when I was a little boy that you're supposed to, what side of the street you're supposed to always walk on, what side of a woman you're supposed to walk on, and, and that a young man is always supposed to be on the side where the traffic is because she was talking to me and training me to know that as a young man, I was supposed to be a watcher. I was supposed to be somebody that was prepared to guard, prepared to instruct, prepared to protect. And this is not something to take lightly. By a long shot. When we would go to restaurants, I believe that we got a chance to see pretty quick that I don't ever like to sit with my back to the door. Because I always want to be mindful of where the exits are as well as the entrances. You should always be in a position that you're paying attention to your surroundings at all times. At all costs, just because we in the Lord don't mean that we're not watching. The scripture says watch and pray. I believe that we should be on guard just as the Lord told Ezekiel that I've commissioned you to be a watchman. And if a sword comes on the land and if someone perishes and you did not warn them, 
you did not give instruction properly, he said, the blood will be on your hands. So I want to ask everybody up in this room, if you can, just keep your eyes looking at me right now. How many exit signs do they have in this room? Anybody remember? How many exit signs? Somebody said to keep looking this way. <laughs> How many exit signs? All right, now y'all can look around, look around, look around. How many exit signs do you actually see? It's only two. I'm talking about from this room right here. From this room, there's two. And even though there's two exits, those exits are also entrances, right? There's three doorways. Well, maybe four, but that's a closet. But there's three doorways that actually give access to outside of the building or more into the building. And in our lives, you have to reflect wherever you go, pay attention to exits and entrances. Everywhere you go, pay attention to exits as well as entrances. And what I want to ask right now is, do you know, if everybody looked around clearly, do you see the exits? Y'all see the exits, right? And do you see the entrance? Yeah, we're all in here, clearly. And I want to ask just another question right now. How expensive is your sight? How, how expensive is your sight? Now watch this next question. How cheap is your revelation? How cheap is it? Is it really inexpensive? Is it free? How expensive is your sight? How cheap is your revelation? And the same way we are inside of a building, we see exits and entrances. I want you to know that because the Lord created us, we also have exits and entrances. Are y'all hearing me? They got certain things that can find its way into us. And there's certain ways that things have exits out of us. And we have to understand when the Lord looks at each one of us, does he see, does the Lord see more entrances or does he see more exits? And I'm talking about for him. For him. He said, and lo, I stand at the door and I knock. What's the purpose of his knock? To see if he can gain coming in. And he says, and I will come in and I will do what? We will eat. We will dine. We will, hallelujah, deal with revelation. We will deal with what you see. I will show you what I see and show you what you see, show you what you should see. Because if a person is blind, that word blind means they cannot see, right? The blind won't see Entrances sometimes, and I'm not talking about physically. The blind won't see the entrance. A lot of times the blind won't see opportunities. The blind has shallow sight. A person blind can see a temptation that's shallow. But the person blind cannot see the consequence a lot of times. Are y'all feeling it? Yes, sir. So our job is to not just see in a shallow standpoint, but we got to go deeper. We, we got to go deeper. The scripture right here says, verse number nine, but he that lacketh these things. So, so wait a minute. If he's saying that there's a person that's blind, but there's something that caters to the blindness. It's something that we either possess or something that we don't possess that has us in a place that we are, you know, 
our vision is limited extremely. It says the person that lacks these things is blind and cannot see far off. Like there's a difference. I wear glasses. They got people who far-sighted, people who near-sighted. That means the quality of our vision is affected. And the scripture says, and hath forgotten. Like, do you still see what you've been through? Do you still remember the price that was paid? For you to get the level of freedom that you have right now. Some, believe it or not, y'all, they got some people that say, I thank God for the freedom I got now. But at one point, they were more free before. And now in order to fight to get the freedom you have now, there's certain things that has to take exit out of your life. And these things that have to take exit, it can't be from a standpoint, Minister Bosco, where we say, uh, you know, I, I would like for you to leave. They got certain things in our life, y'all, we can't give it options. We got certain things that we have to understand that according to this jurisdiction, I have a right to say I no longer want this in my life. I have a right. And I choose to enforce my rights, spiritually especially, as well as naturally. He says, but the person that lacks certain things, they're blind. That means the blind won't see an entrance. The blind, a lot of times, won't see opportunity. You can get a job and see supervisors tripping with so many people. And your mindset could put you in a place of fear because you're saying because he's tripping with everybody else, he's got to trip with me too. And just because somebody else is under this microscope of being attacked, it don't mean that this is your season. The scripture says that the death angel was going to go throughout Egypt. And God gave instruction to Moses and said, tell my people to take the blood of an innocent lamb. Apply it on the doorposts. And he says, when the death angel comes in to those who are chosen and called, he will have to pass over. Y'all, they got some, some trials you don't have to go through. They got some tests you don't have to welcome into your life. They got some things we can't avoid, but they got some things you don't have to say, I want to go through that too. Nah, 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 nah. I, don't. I, I understand I have to suffer through some things, but I don't choose to suffer. If I do suffer, I want to suffer well. I want to believe that I don't have to walk in fear. I want to believe that God also understands my GPS in this particular location. And he understands that there is a way out. There is a way of escape. There's an exit. Hallelujah. So for him to say the person that lacks these things, even though I want to deal with those who are blind, I want to deal with entrances. I'm led even more so to for him to say lack at these things is blind. Everybody say, I don't want to be blind. I don't want to, I don't want to be blind. So that means that there's some things in a couple of verses before we get here that if we're lacking some of these things, believe it or not, blindness is closer. Father, right now, we just ask right now, Lord God, that the things that we're about to hear Father, we ask right now in the name of Messiah Yeshua, open our eyes right now, Lord God. We ask right now, Lord God, let our gatekeeper be alert, Lord God, our minds, that we be not ignorant of the enemy's devices. Father, we ask right now, Lord God, that our storage tank would be purged from those things that are decept deceitful and those things that have so much passion that could cause very strong people to believe that they're in love with a married person. They could, they could believe that something that belongs to somebody else is theirs. And they can be so strongly deceived, Lord God, that they begin to steal, kill, and destroy. Because they begin to take on themselves the attributes of the father of those actions. 
So, Father, right now, we ask that you open our eyes right now, Lord God. Hallelujah. I choose to see every entrance. And I choose to see every exit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask that question again. How expensive is your sight? Hallelujah. How cheap is your revelation? Can revelation be cheap? Yeah, it, believe it or not, it can be. Because if you have revelation, that's like somebody saying, I know I want to see God. And the minute a test come or the minute a temptation come, the person can have little to no resistance to the test or the temptation. And they effortlessly, <laughs> they fall. I'm falling and I can't get up. Y'all remember that conversion? <laughs> Y'all, it's, it's important that we understand and know who we are because, man, we, we read something. Y'all, I promise I'm going right before nine. But look what it says in verse number 10. It says, wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. For if you do these things, what that Bible say, y'all? You will never fall. That means you will never have shallow sight. Hallelujah. I win and I learn. I choose not to lose. Hallelujah. Let's let's go up right now. Second Peter two and verse number one. Y'all watch this. Let's hurry up and get into this so that we can deal with these scriptures. That's going to be power packed from verse number five through eight. But watch verse one through four. Watch this. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained Like precious faith. I'm only gathering with those that have like precious faith. The only way we could be in here together because it's something that brings us on common ground. And we gather together because everybody said we have like precious faith. faith. It's not cheap. It's precious. Valuable. Hallelujah. Why is this? Like precious faith which with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Watch this, verse number two. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Watch this, y'all. Verse number three. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. So look, y'all, so so he's called us to glory and to virtue. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Today was the first day that I really did a... a a little bit of research on that word virtue. I heard the word a lot, you know, and, you know, and how Jesus said he felt that the virtue left them. And, you know, what's this word virtue? He says we've been called. Boy, this is so powerful. We've been called to glory and to virtue. Watch this. And y'all going to get, I'm going to deal with that word virtue in just a moment. Watch this. Verse number four, whereby are given unto us exceeding Great and precious promises. Why does he have to say exceedingly great and precious promises? I have to make you aware that there's something that's afforded to you because it's my understanding that you might not see everything. You might not see it all. It's your job that if it's your vocation, it's your commandment that if you connect with people, that you can tell that you have some type of connection. The purpose of that connection is because of the like precious faith a lot of times. And you can't allow yourself to be discouraged because you see the darkness or you see the sinness in their life. A per- just like Minister Sam just got you talking about. I don't care how much sin a person got. It does not mean that the call of God has missed their life. They still got it. Still called of God. Still purposed, still gifted. Everybody say, I still have everything that God portioned for my life. We got to know that. So guess what? If it go for you, guess what? It goes for everybody else too. So that means that I got to be sure that I don't allow 
short-sightedness or blindness to lead me into a path that's not royal. We got that, y'all? We got that for a moment? According to his divine power, had given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. That word godliness, I'm going to deal with that one too. Through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers, you might be partakers of the divine nature, that you may walk as he walked, that you may live as he lived. He says signs and wonders are going to follow the word, that you might be a partaker of the divine nature. Having, look what it says, escaped. That means I found the exit. Having escaped the corruption that is in this world. Anybody remember being in some, some real dark places? And, and you start saying, man, I can't be doing this anymore. Y'all can still remember sitting in one of my boys, the back of seat of one of my partner's car. And I remember they pulled out some weed and start lighting and start passing it around. And I remember I grabbed the weed and I remember I was feeling so convicted that I didn't realize, but it was, it was, it was a, a change that was taking place in my life. But I felt like y'all, and I need y'all to understand people that's falling into stuff don't think that they're not feeling conviction. A lot of times they're doing it convicted. And I remember when I grabbed it, I was like, man, y'all, we, we ain't gonna, look what I say, we ain't gonna be doing this a long time from now, you know, we, we, we gonna be changing, right, you know, and they're looking at me like, what are you talking about? And, and I'm in a position that I didn't realize it at the time, but I begin to look for the escape. You gotta get to a place that you're willing to declare that you're looking for the exit even if nobody else around you is looking for it. Some people are looking for entrances. Some people are going deeper into darkness. And I don't know about you, I feel like I just saw it dark enough where I was. I feel like I'm ready to get on. Where's the light, y'all? Man, the Lord said we're going to a place where we don't even need a sun to shine. So his glory is going to light up everything. Hallelujah. And he told us he told us, you are the light of the world. Hallelujah. So that means there's something about me that, that when, when light shows up, darkness has to flee. Darkness has to flee. Everybody say, I'm a partaker of his divine nature. I share in the glory. And y'all got, you got to say that, y'all. And, and I need y'all to know that ain't got nothing to do with how much money you're making right now. Ain't got nothing to do with what you're driving. Ain't got nothing to do with if you single or are you in a relationship or not. This was something that was set in heaven before the foundation of the world. That means that no matter what you go through, no matter what you go through, that gift and that calling has not lost its way. Look what God says. God says, how can I relate? How can I get you to understand? Consider the rain. When the rain comes down and it does not return thither, like the rain doesn't come and right before it hit the ground, it doesn't make a U-turn and go back up to the cloud. Nah, when that rain falls, y'all know how it is. Sometimes when you, when you know it's about to rain and we go outside, you know, sometimes they got those big old fat raindrops that pop you on your head. And, and you look at it like out of all the people, you know, you got some people around you ain't get hit at all, but you get hit. He said, that's how my word is. My word is going to go wherever it was sent to go. And it will accomplish. Hallelujah. That which was it was sent to do. So when we understand that we've been able to escape because we have a divine nature. Hallelujah. Why did we want to get out? Because of the divine nature. Why couldn't we stay in those fornication relationships? Because of a divine nature. Why we couldn't just stay in darkness and continue to do so much mischief? Because of a divine nature. 
Because no matter how much darkness, no matter how much sin, it could not totally eclipse. The scripture says in the book of John, he says that anyone that is born of God, if his seed remains in him, hallelujah, his seed is still there. Sometimes I wonder, man, how much did I allow the Holy Ghost to, to suffer while he was in me? And I'm trying to run to all these different places, trying to do these different things. And the scripture says to a man that joins himself with the harlot, he's one with the harlot. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? You are not your own. You've been bought with a price. Know ye not. You've got to know that your body and your spirit belongs to God. See, a lot of times I always grew up saying my spirit belongs to God, but we forgot the body. That's why he said, no, you're not that your body is the temple. Belongs to God, crafted, created specifically. Your hair had to be this color. Your, your, your size had to be this way. Because of the gift and the calling, you call for a reason, for a purpose. Hallelujah. That you might be partakers of the divine nature. You mean to tell me I'm standing here? There's a part of me that's divine. You mean to tell me where you all are sitting right now? You are divine. In him. In him. I know it's not popular. You got people in the world. You got new age saying it. I'm a God. I'm a God. But wait a minute. They have a different jurisdiction. They mean it in a different way. But you got to understand, Messiah Yeshua himself said, I said in the scriptures that you are gods and the scriptures cannot be broken. Yes, Whose jurisdiction do you rest if, if the Lord tells me that I'm one of his mighty ones? I choose to have vision rather than being blind. Y'all tired of being blind, man. I, man, I need my eyes open because you know what? If we got, if we need, if we need to be able to see for anything, I'm gonna just throw this one word out, y'all. This one word, it got a couple of syllables in it. But but we need vision for relationships. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Whether or not it's brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, we need vision. Praise the Lord. And that means not to say that it's going to prevent you from having some suffering, and it can. But if you happen to still go through it, you go through it knowing who you are. I am the righteousness of God, created in Christ Jesus. With long life, I will be satisfied. I will live and not die. Hallelujah. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor does he stand in the way of the sinner, nor does he sit in the seat of the scornful. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of, how can he be my strength? Because I'm divine. Sometimes you can't even speak the words you want to speak because your words don't line up with the divinity of who you are. It's not my words, it's his. And he gave them to me. So now I say they're my words too. They're my words too. He says, I'm giving you exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. So I really believe that being partakers of the divine nature is connected to if you lack these, you're blind. So now he's telling us if you have this, partakers of the divine. If you don't have it, blind, short-sighted, can't see the promises, can't see the potential, can't see the entrance. Partakers of the divine nature haven't escaped. Oh, yeah, we found the exit. Everybody say, I made it out, man. I made it out. Everybody say, I'm still getting out. I don't care, man. I find myself in something, Lord, where is the exit? Stage left. Let's get up out of this mess. Praise the Lord. 
if I got a friend, if I got a brother, I got a son or a daughter. What are you doing there? I'm headed to the exit. Are you coming with me? Praise the Lord. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So every entrance we find ourselves into into darkness is because of a lustful desire that made us say, I'm curious. Well, until I got to Texas, I start hearing about bi curious. What in the world is bi curious? That means they don't know if they're fully gay or not. But they say, I'm just curious about it. They got some doors you don't need to go in. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Having escaped the, the corruption that is in this world through lust. Uh oh, here we go, y'all. Everybody take out your pens. <laughs> Praise the Lord, we got to deal with this. It's your paper if you got something to write with. Look what this word says in verse number five. And beside this, y'all, this is the reason why we can't be blind. Beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Y'all see that? And to virtue, knowledge. So wait a minute. What is my faith, add to my faith, virtue. Faith is your moral conviction, your moral compass. In this particular case, it's not talking about that which you're about to obtain, which is the unseen, but it's talking about that faith that you already possess, which you already have, your moral conviction. My faith is my commitment to the word of God. What is my faith? My substance of my true confession. My faith is my true profession. I profess, I confess. This is where I am. This is where I'm going. This is who I'm becoming. Praise the Lord. That's what my faith is. My profession. Guess what else this faith is? Your fidelity. Not infidelity. Infidelity is unfaithfulness. Fidelity means I'm locked. I'm not turning to the left or the right. It says add to your fidelity. Your truth of anything. This level of faith does not just talk about what or who you choose to serve. This actually begins to cross wires because it takes faith just to sit in a chair. So you got people that have, you know, different levels of faith that we all have faith to walk. We have faith to get in a car and drive. But this faith, we're talking about the God kind of faith. Praise the Lord. So this type of truth affects anything and everything that you look at. Your conviction in to God and it's also dealing with your holy fervor. How, that which, which means like saying, how strong is your faith? I know you committed now, but if that chick come over here and whisper in your ear telling you a couple of things she want to do, how strong is your faith then? I know, I know, I know your, your faith is strong right now. But if he come telling you, I want to take you out to dinner and and he making well over six figures, he smell the way you like him, he look the way you like him. How strong is your faith then? And I'm not saying that to say that you shouldn't even be in proximity with somebody like that. But what I am saying is if you are in proximity, how strong is your faith? Don't you ever think that just because you don't have a title or a position that you can't be used of God. I just got through talking about us being partakers of what, y'all? His divine nature. The Lord said you don't have to leave the divine when you go into Walmart. When you go on your job, why, why are you going to leave the divine in your car? Ah. Praise the Lord. So, so y'all, check this out. This particular faith in the Greek is pistis, moral conviction, commitment to God. 
the substance of your true confession, the substance of your true profession, your conviction and relationship to God. How strong, how holy is your fervor to remain where you are? How strong is your fidelity? Because right now, y'all, they are just like how what happened with uh, Catholicism. Y'all know Catholicism was a, a montage of so many different religions. So much paganistic worship mixed together. That means it was low on fidelity. That's why we had the Protestant movement. Praise the Lord. So once we deal with faith, watch this, y'all. Giving all diligence, add to your faith. Now that's what's faith. Add to your moral conviction, your fidelity, your conviction, your confession, your profession. Add to your faith virtue. Oh, oh here we go. Now, if, if virtue meant faith, we wouldn't have to say virtue. So what is virtue, Minister Sam? Virtue, listen to this, y'all. Virtue is given in a male kind of tense, like the male gender. And it's as if to say the same way that we normally would look at a man to say that he's stronger concerning certain actions, certain things he's built for. So when you're talking about virtue, you're literally talking about someone stronger for lifting. And now, without dealing with um, perversion, there are women that are extremely strong, which means that it's safe to say that there's some women that because of their mindset, they became stronger than some men are strong as men. Are y'all feeling what I'm saying? And I'm not talking about as it relates to order. I'm not talking about as it relates to husband and wife. I'm talking about just in virtue. Hallelujah. Virtue means add to your faith purity. Like when you, when you talk about being having more virtue, that means you got to be more pure than what you were before. Y'all got that? Everybody say add to my faith virtue. Add to my faith virtue. Guess what? Not only is it purity, but it's also modesty. To be modest. To get to a point where I'm not just trying to be all out there. But I have the tongue of the learned. That I know how to answer everybody. I'm not ignorant. I'm not somebody that speaks foolishly. I don't dress foolishly. Why? Because I'm modest. Hallelujah. Which is also connected to that humility. Praise the Lord. But guess what else, y'all? That virtue is meaning to have a willingness to fight for what you believe. Add to your faith. Another one says valor. You mighty man of valor. But I'm standing by myself. You mighty man of valor. But I don't even have a job right now. Oh yeah. Mighty man of valor. You see the way they talk about me while my family's so broke. I can change your whole generation, your whole nation by you as one man. Mighty man of valor. Add to your faith virtue. Your willingness to fight. And guess what? Virtue also connects with praise. Wait a minute. I got all these things coming against me. It looked like there's no way out. What you going to do? Hallelujah. Oh, God, I give you praise, Lord God. I don't know what's about to happen, but Romans 8 and 28 say all things work together for my good. So hallelujah anyhow. Hallelujah. I'm surrounded for the open their eyes so that they can see. Hallelujah. That those who are for us are mightier than those who are against us, Nisa. We, we got to understand it. So y'all, guess what, y'all? If we don't have faith and virtue, guess what? The scripture says we blind. We still not done, y'all. You need faith. You need virtue. But look what it says. And to your virtue, add knowledge. If I don't have knowledge, I'm blind. So wait a minute. What is knowledge? Knowledge is intelligence. Hallelujah. Intelligence, deeper, more perfect knowing. 
enhanced with heaven's statutes. We're not just talking about knowledge. You know, people tell you everything about this world, man. They start telling you about telling you about the stocks and all that kind of stuff. I had a brother that was telling me before about the stocks and all that kind of stuff, trying to get into these different cryptocurrency, all these different things that can happen. And guess what? I just found out just a couple, about two days ago, a whole bunch of stuff just obliterated, just gone. And he's like, hey, man, I know so many people lost some money. And I'm like, oh, I thank you. Because I was, you know, you know how it is. Because sometimes you think, you know, like, I want I want my money to make some money too. You know what I mean? But but you got to have faith, <laughs> virtue, and to your virtue, man, you need knowledge. What is that? Enhanced with heaven's statutes and precepts. Boy, watch this. When I was writing this, I was like, oh, my God. We need the wisdom of knowledge. Yes, sir. Did y'all get that? Yes, sir. Because many people have the knowledge of wisdom. But we need the wisdom of knowledge. Hallelujah. So add to your faith virtue. To your virtue, knowledge. Guess what, y'all? All three of these, say if you don't have them, the light is going out. Yes, sir. You're in danger. Add to your faith virtue, your virtue knowledge. Wait a minute, y'all. We still ain't done. Verse number six. And to knowledge, temperance. Y'all, I want y'all to understand. These are some keys, y'all. These are some keys, y'all. These are talking about entrances, exits. These are talking about escape plans. If, if, if what you're embracing does not allow you to operate in these, Get out of there. If you, I'm not strong enough right now. Get out and get somewhere where you can plug up. Your power is getting low. Man, get out of there. Go plug up. Go go get plugged. Real talk. Yes, sir. Go get plugged. Get to that gas station, man. How, how, how low are you going to let it get? I mean, your, your, your light, gas light already on. How much further are you going to go? Fill up. Ain't nothing wrong with filling up when you're at a half tank. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Ain't nothing wrong with filling up when you got three quarters. Y'all know how we do. Phone on 87%. Let me put this thing on charge. Because when I leave, I don't know how long I'm going to be gone. What if we begin to allow our spirit to operate like that? Praise the Lord. Verse number six, to knowledge temperance. So what's temperance? Y'all already know that. Self-control. But why is this? Temperance involves one who masters his desires and his passions, especially his sensual appetites. Yes, sir. See, I got to be careful with this, boy. Because I mean, I'm, I, I, y'all, I'm telling you, I'm still human. And 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 when ain't nothing broken and everything works, you got to be careful. The scripture says you got to have self-control. One who, not just, not the one who talked to your desires and your appetites. One who masters. Masters. How, how many times you didn't got caught up in something before? Did you learn from the last time or did you forget what you went through last time? Different face, different state, same problem. Add to knowledge, temperance. Be able to master your desire and your passion, especially sensual appetites. But guess what? After you deal with your temperance, he's still not done, y'all. He says, add to temperance, patience. What's patience? Patience is steadfastness. Patience is, man, I'm looking down the street. I don't see no bus nowhere in sight. But I know it's coming. That's what patience is. Patience is not if. Don't tell me if. No, don't say no if. When. That's the difference. I know it's going to happen. It's just the fact that I got to give it time to happen. That's what patience is. True patience. Steadfastness. Not easily swayed from deliberate attacks that would cause you to be moved, make sure you go around, Shima. Always make sure that you're 
not easily swayed from your call to purpose. Patience is also de uh, denoting being loyal to your faith. I'm waiting for a move of God, but I'm not going to give up when sorcery shows up. I'm waiting on a move of God, but I'm not going to settle for seduction. I'm waiting on a move of God, but I'm not about to be desperate right now to where I'm about to start looking for lies and deceit to come because I know it's coming. I know it's coming. Loyalty to faith, even during the greatest trials. Being able to persevere. Hallelujah. It's a deliberate call to purpose. Praise the Lord. As patience, y'all, we done? No, it says add to your patience now godliness. Okay, so what is godliness? Godliness is being holy. Being holy. Godliness means devout. Like you've been like that for a long time. You know, you got some people that choose to believe in God right now and say, okay, you got a week up under your belt. Praise the Lord. You ain't missed no service in a month. Praise the Lord. But how are we doing outside of church right now, y'all? Because y'all do know that sometimes, unfortunately, it's true and sometimes it's babe. But sometimes, y'all, we can put on makeup. We can put on costumes and come to church. And we can be holy as I don't know what in the building. And leave out of here. And be like them lizards that change colors based on their environment. They got a lot of people that ran away, fought, fell away because they came to church looking for God. But a more accurate description was they came looking for divinity in the people that they worshipped with. And they didn't find any. I guess they probably said, well, I went there for a while. I know this one got this issue. This one got that issue. And I guess they were like, is there anybody? <laughs> is there anybody that's strong in the area where I'm weak? And I guess they say, I guess this ain't the place. Hey, I'm listening to the pastor. I don't even hear it being addressed. Does that mean everybody good? <laughs> Praise the Lord. We got some issues, y'all, that's hindering us from, from elevating. We got some issues, y'all, listen to me. We got some issues that are hindering us from elevating to a place where Father is calling us. And it's not separate from being partakers of the divine nature. The things he's requiring of us, we have to be more like him. Praise the Lord. So after godliness, verse number seven, and add to your godliness, Philadelphia. Brotherly kindness, that's what Philadelphia means. Brotherly kindness, the Greek word, if you look up in Strong's Concordance, the Greek word for brotherly kindness says Philadelphia. It means that we got to get to a place where we continue to show love one to another. Showing brotherly kindness, Hebrews 13 and 1. Make sure you continue to operate in brotherly kindness. Hallelujah. Philadelphia. Praise the Lord. And then also, he says, after brotherly kindness, he says, charity. Charity. What is charity? Charity is love, but it's the action love. You know, because I could say I love you and really mean it from my heart. But love takes a different meaning when I begin to demonstrate how much I love you. Praise the Lord. He says, so now you got to add to brotherly kindness that charity. Here we go, y'all. Verse number eight. For if these things be in you, and if they abound, meaning that they're getting become becoming more and more, it's increasing. You're not just you got all those things, but guess what? When you get all of them, then you got to begin to grow in all of them. If they be in you, and if they abound, they make you that you shall neither be what? What your Bible say? You will not be barren. Barren means empty. Can't produce. You see, you will not be barren. No unfruitful. 
in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now we get right back to where we started. But he that lacketh all these things is blind and can't see. The blind won't see the entrance. The blind won't see the opportunity that should be obvious. The blind has shallow sight. There may be some people who are watching right now and, and you realize that, you know, you want more from God, but you realize that you're being hindered. And it's because of blindness. The scripture says anybody that comes to God must first believe that he is. I hear so many people saying, man, I tried to give God a chance to show himself to me. I tried to give God a chance. I tried. I tried. I told him do this for me. I told him do that for me. <laughs> so, so wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is he God? Is he the king or are you the king? Is he the slave or are you the slave? Are you the servant? Is he the servant? Anyone that comes to God must first believe that he is. He is. He am. The I am. It's important for us to understand that we have to be able to see. And I just want to ask everybody, do you see your entrance? The scripture says that to the person that sees, he says, there is an entrance that's given unto you. An entrance. Daniel is in the lion's den, and there was no way out. But after the Lord delivered him, the same way they put him in, they had to get him out of there. They got some stuff, y'all, that you in that you might not like. Learn how to be faithful while you're in it. And that faithfulness that you have is going to all of a sudden call you and summons you. And want to know, how did you get through that? How were you able to be in the midst of that fiery trial and you did not give in? How did you handle that? Because I chose to be a partaker of the divine nature. I begin to, I realized I had to begin to lose who I was in order to become everything he called me to be. This is not an accident, y'all. We are called for a much higher purpose at today. Don't allow yourself to be easily offended at all. Begin to say, I take that. And when you take that, step up to the next level. Because everybody ain't going to be able to keep blaming you. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, sometimes y'all feel blamed. Guess what, y'all? When you take that exit or you take that entrance, guess what? They ain't going to be able to blame you no more. Are, are y'all feeling me? Because an entrance has been given unto us. Paul said, pray because there's many adversaries, many devils, many lions that seek to come against us. We're more than conquerors. We are victorious. Y'all, let's stand to our feet. We're done, y'all. We are more than conquerors. We are, everybody, everybody, let's stand to our feet. Stand to your feet. Everybody say, I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I am victorious. I am victorious. Everybody say, I'm not blind. So that means that we need to all go and read those attributes again. Yes, sir. I'm not blind. I'm not blind. I'm not blind. But if I'm blind and I don't want to be blind anymore. I think it was what? Matthew 13, I think. First thing he said, the blind receive their sight. The lame walked. The deaf was able to hear. I don't know about y'all, but I want y'all to just, in, in the spirit right now, in the spirit of your mind, begin to see yourself trying on a divine nature. Oh, Robakaya, 
We live around the world, y'all, around people that's going to be so against it. But begin to see yourself putting on a divine nature. And guess what, y'all? This nature is so divine that when you get in the shower, you ain't got to worry about having to take it off like you take everything else off. You can keep it on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm his child. Do, do you really believe that you are a son of God? Do you really believe for as many as received him, to them gave he the right to become the sons called of God? Everybody say, I'm not lost. I'm not lost. Y'all, let me tell you something. When you begin to mature, you start realizing not only do you fend for yourself and believe God to help you get in more freedom, but when your eyes really become open and you're not blind, that's when you start realizing, how long, how long we've been cool? How long you've been standing here? We talk every day. And now that I see me, it helps me to see you. And all of a sudden, you're not ashamed to talk about the goodness of God. And now when your eyes come open, you begin to let somebody know you didn't pay attention. That was an exit. I used to be there. Come on, go with me. Come on up to a higher place. You could be sitting right next to somebody and not realize that you only God knows eons above and, and you're talking to them whenever you're talking about spiritual things it's like you're in a higher place we're not on a low low level not in no valley right now he seated us together where heavenly places heavenly places I want I want to I want to warn you all and local assemblies have a bad rap right now. People gathering together even in the name of Jesus. That's why Paul said if they preach any other Jesus to you, let them be accursed. Yes, Analyze. Who are you for real? Make your election sure. The signs and the wonders are going to follow the word. That's why we got to come together. That's why we got to yoke up. That's why we can't be afraid to say, man, I'm struggling with this, bro. What's going on? Because when you really understand that your identity and your gifts and your call can't be taken away from you, it takes the pressure off to say, OK, I've been struggling with lust. I've been struggling with, with, with theft. I've been struggling. I don't know why, man. I see it. And, and why do it come in my mind when I see it sitting there and I don't see nobody around? I just want to take it. What's going on with me? I lie. And I ain't even got no reason to lie. I just lie. Let me tell y'all something. Lies does not call cause the purpose, the call, and the gifting to miss. This is sure as the next time you outside and when a raindrop hits you flat on your nose, it didn't miss. Guess what? The gifts and the callings didn't miss. Varieties of operations, diversities of giftings it didn't miss. So now it's about you finding out what's my purpose. What's my purpose? Y'all th thought that people who good in math, people who do numbers, booking, accounting, y'all think that that is separate from the gift and the calling of God? 